Hi, this is Dr. Christy Winters, host of the Push Backlash podcast, and I'm really excited to be here today with Professor Zoe Lefkofridi of the University of Salzburg to talk about the Push Backlash project. Hello, I'm very excited to be here in Cologne with you, and thank you very much for the invitation. Push Backlash project. It's so exciting. It's so innovative and new. I really would um, love to hear more about your perspective for what was the inspiration and what are the aims of the vision of the project. So the Pushback Lash is a project that is funded by the European Commission's program on research and innovation, um, specifically focusing on protecting and nurturing democracies. So this is a project about democracy. And democracy is very important for me. I have been socialized in a family where I learned that democracy is worth fighting for. So my parents have been imprisoned um, for democracy and tortured. My mother was very active in the resistance against the dictatorship in the late 60s in Athens, Greece, where actually democracy was also born. <laughs> But... Uh, It has not always been democratic. So I have this um, experience of, um, I've, I've, heard, I've heard these stories about life under dictatorial rule, authoritarian rule. So I have learned early on that democracy is a very, very uh, important um, value and goal. And that's really something that uh, we should protect and nurture. So this is the most important um, inspiration. That's my own family. And the project is about democracy. And democracy is the only political system that is based on equality. So gender equality um, has uh, progressed a lot in uh, the last decades. Uh, but uh, recently we have seen some backward movement. And also we should say that it has progressed, but um, not for all kinds of women, um, across uh, different classes or with different um, sexual orientation, different um, ethnic background, etc. So we have seen progress, but we also have seen uh, backward movement. We have seen a backlash against gender equality. So the project is trying to understand the backlash. It conducts a very systematic um, multidisciplinary analysis of the backlash, but also of the pushback, the democratic pushback against the backlash. It sounds like feminism is a very important part of the project then in terms of a dimension of analysis. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the project defines feminism? The project is indeed about the relationship between feminism and democracy. And feminism is a movement pursuing equality. So ideally all humans should have equal rights, but not just on paper but also in real life, in daily life. Um, they should be treated with uh, respect. They should be given equal opportunities to fulfill their potential, pursue their dreams, etc. So feminism is not just about women. It is also about men being given the opportunity to spend time on childcare, to uh, be able to contribute to the development of their children. It is about men being allowed to cry and show emotions because we know, based on scientific research, that um, people that have not learned to connect to their emotions and to understand their emotions, they have a lot of problems, mental health issues, etc. But it's not just the individual level problem that you get if you oppress people and you don't let them um, be. You also get bad leadership because if you have leaders that are not connected to their emotions and are unable to understand the emotions of their employees, so basically they don't have what we say emotional intelligence. Based on research, we know that 
people that lack this are not good leaders. So it's about, you know, it's also about, feminism is also about well-being, but it's also about better governance. Looking over the project bid, it's very innovative and has a lot of really unique and novel things. Can you, yeah, get into a little bit more about the different aspects of Push Backlash? The key innovation is that um, not only we're trying to understand both backlash and the pushback against it, but we are doing this from uh, different disciplinary perspectives. So we have uh, political science, which is my field, but also communication, philosophy, social psychology. We have uh, theater. So there is um, a lot of diversity of, of perspectives. Um, and we are looking uh, at this problem using a lot of different methodologies. So in the social sciences, we have uh, qualitative methods, interviews, focus groups, um, we also have quantitative methods like surveys and survey experiments, but we also use uh, really um, innovative methods like um, theater, the theater of the oppressed, in order to understand um, especially the pushback. We are analyzing backlash and pushback on three levels. The citizen level, the elite level, so political parties, and also the level of social media, which is a new reality we are all confronted with. And it's very important for understanding um, the backlash against female politicians or uh, uh, feminist activists. And in fact, just um, simple women that are trying to have a conversation online. You talked about the diversity of methodologies, and I know another part of your research within the Push Backlash project is to take into account a lot of people's different perspectives. And that term intersectionality is oftentimes used to, to capture that. I was wondering if you could explain a little bit more about intersectionality and why it's important in this project to include other people's perspectives. Intersectionality is a lens that acknowledges differences within the broad categories of men and women. It is a concept that originates from black feminism. So it was born out of the efforts to understand uh, the intersection between gender and race. So a black woman um, has a different experience compared to a white woman, but she also has a different experience compared to a black man. Nowadays, we see a lot more um, intersections. So, for example, you would see an intersection between gender and disability, gender and um, religion. So, but what um, intersectionality teaches us is that there are many different perspectives. So there are different ways, uh, different experiences um, among queer people, among disabled people, among uh, Muslim people. So it is a way of acknowledging these differences. So not there are no homogeneous groups of women or men. And why, it is, why is it important to um, take into account differences and diverse perspectives? It is another big concept of democracy is pluralism. It is the basis um, of our systems. And for me personally, it has, again, um, I have a little story from my family that my father is uh, originating from a conservative, very Christian, royalist family, whereas my mom uh, is coming from a social democratic, um, anti-royalist family. Um, so these two people came together and it was possible to have a very nice family. They are still together. And at the kitchen table, of course, we had different perspectives. And then on Sunday, when we would go to grandma's who invited us all to eat, there were many more political perspectives. So we had like lively discussions and we disagreed very often. But what we learned is that um, you're not always right. Um, actually, you might be most often right, but not always. And there are sometimes better arguments. There are 
So if you deny this, that there are different perspectives, then you will never be able to listen, you will never be open, and you will not be tolerant to difference. And that's, in a democracy, is very problematic. And I learned that it's, it's not easy, but it's very rewarding. It's very rewarding to have uh, different perspectives because you cannot have all these different experiences, right? So you only get them if you want to listen. This sounds so exciting to me. I'm really excited to see this project go forward. But as we wrap up, uh, what are your goals for taking these ideas and turning them into you know, things in the real world? The project is trying to understand the strategies and tactics of backlash and also to assess their effects. And at the same time, it is trying to identify best practices for countering this um, anti-gender equality discourses and to strengthen democracy and democratic practice. And we do that by taking into account political parties, public opinion, and social media. However, we do not just stay at the scientific uh, level. So besides our research that we will disseminate at, conference, at conferences, we also want to develop solutions. We will be in exchange with policymakers and activists in order to be able to issue policy recommendations and to create context-sensitive tools for strengthening democracy and from strengthening democracy from an intersectional perspective. We will also co-create and disseminate knowledge for gender equality to make it simple and accessible to all. One of the key messages of the project and of our consortium is that it's not enough to just observe uh, and understand that there is a problem, but um, it's also important to do something um, in order to change it. So if there is misery around you, of course, you are not responsible for it, but you are responsible for your reaction to it. To give an example, if you are um, witnessing sexual harassment in your working environment and you're not doing anything to address it and to change it, to stop it, then you are becoming part of the problem. So that's why push backlash is not just studying backlash, but is also trying to strengthen the pushback. We are running out of time, but I really could talk to you all afternoon. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, for those of you who enjoyed this podcast, we're going to be hearing from Zoe again. I'm sure we will be getting um, her at one of the online gender cafes that this project is going to be putting out. And it would be great, of course, to have you back at the end when it's all over to reflect on where things have been. So thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and for sharing your time with us. Thank you for having me. I'll be uh, back with pleasure. This has been the Push Backlash podcast, episode one. Thank you for joining us and for listening. If you'd like to stay up to date with our most recent content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Spotify. This production was funded by Horizon Europe, grant agreement project number 10106167. For more information on the Push Backlash project, please visit our website at pushbacklash.eu or find us on Instagram. You can also find our latest podcasts and videos on Spotify or on YouTube.